Have you ever been walking on the beach and suddenly you see something that looks kind of like a sponge? Well, it really could be a sponge. And I have a special story for you today all about sponges. This is the story of the periphera. The sponges belong to a group of organisms called periphera, which means pore bearing because their bodies are covered with small pores. And do you know that scientists continue to argue whether sponges belong to animals, to plants, or maybe even to something else? Who knows? In any case, they are very interesting organisms and they are very, very simple. They have only two layers of cells. The ectoderm is the outside and the endoderm is the inside. And all of their cells function completely independently that means that each cell takes in the oxygen and food that it alone needs from the water and then also gives off its own waste right back into the water. What is remarkable about sponges is that they could be considered aggregates of cells without organs since each cell functions by itself. If they were to be broken apart, each part could live on its own all by itself. The pores on the walls of a sponge that open to the outside are called ostia, which comes from the Greek word that means river mouth. And that makes sense because this is where the water enters the sponge's body. At the summit of the sponge, at the top, there's another opening called the osculum from the Latin word that means little mouth. So the water moves in and out of the ostia and osculum, bringing and taking oxygen and food and carrying away waste products. Very simple. And this is the limit of their circulation and respiration and digestion. The body of a sponge manages to support itself, not with a skeleton like what we have, but in layers of cells called spicules. The different kinds of spicules help scientists classify sponges into different groups. Some sponges have spicules made out of calcium carbonate and they belong to the group calcarea. The group that has spicules made out of silica is called the hexatinellida. Guess how many sides the hexatinellida has? Six, because hexa means six. They have the same material that glass is made out of, silica. So these sponges are called the glass sponges, and they're very beautiful. There's a third type of sponge that are most known to us people because we use them when we bathe. Their spicules are made out of something called spongin, and that material is so soft and squeezable. But because people have used these sponges for centuries, they get their name for the Greek word for people, which is demos. So they are called the demospongia. The sponge has a couple of different ways to reproduce itself. They're all very easy. One of the ways is by forming a little bud on its, its outside, which eventually will break away and create a new sponge. A second way is that when life becomes very difficult, maybe there's a drought or it becomes very cold, they will, the sponge will form a bud on the inside and it's called a gemule because it looks like a gem. So it makes these little tiny gemules which drop off and disintegrate. And when conditions are more favorable, the gemules burst open and find a nice place to settle. They float around in the water until they find the exact place they want to be because once they settle down, they can't move anymore. And that's what scientists call Cecil. So that is the extent of the movement of the sponge. Now I've included several beautiful pictures of the sponges. Perhaps you would like to draw them and paint them. Or maybe you can make a comic about one of these types of sponges that releases a gemule and what happens to that gemule. I can't wait to see what you do.